I only panicked a second ago because if we lost too many kids, you guys were about to be volunteering for some upfront activities. <laughs> and I uh, wanted to make sure that we had an ample supply of volunteers for that. So uh, it's been an exciting week. I hope that you've already felt the energy of the room this morning, uh, listening to our kids sing their songs. Such an exciting time. So you've uh, no doubt realized, even if you uh, were a little bit late uh, when we talked about it in the beginning, that this Sunday is a, a bit different compared to our normal uh, rhythms at CBC, our normal uh, service. And so uh, you, you recognize that today's service is really geared at and for our kids after they've had uh, their VBS this week. And so in light of that, I, I want to take a very brief moment before we dive into the passage that Jillian just read for us, and I want to reemphasize just how vital uh, we believe that times like these and services like these are in the life of our church. And so at CBC, we can say that children, kids really matter to us because they really, really matter to Jesus, right? And we, we could paint a tapestry through the Gospels of this, that Jesus takes time to care for children and to heal children who are sick and to teach children and to embrace them and hold them and even to identify them as the type of people who will enter the kingdom, right? Jesus says in Mark 10, 15, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And so that's a message for all of us, but especially for uh, us adults today to hear that if we ourselves don't come to Christ like children in childlike faith and dependence, then we have no inheritance in the kingdom. We have no share in the kingdom. We don't belong to Christ because to belong to him is to come as a child. And so what we need to be reminded of today is that kids aren't distractions from our mission and our vision at CBC. When we think about that threefold vision that we talk about often of Christ-centered community and evangelism and leadership development, all of those things are inseparably linked to how we view and treat and minister to children in our midst, right? Think about Christ-centered community. How can our community really be Christ-centered if those that Christ loves and cares for aren't a focal point in our ministry? Think about evangelism and discipling and, and developing leaders. God has provided us with what you see, a massive mission field right in front of us, those that we get to invest the gospel in and train them to be disciples who treasure Christ above all else and make disciples who do the same. So all that to say is that even though this service is fun, this isn't just a cute little service to put on our calendar. It's actually saying something really significant about who we are and what we're about at CBC. And so this is my disclaimer for the sermon uh, portion of our service today, is that it also is going to feel a bit different uh, than our regular time of preaching and biblical exposition. We're still going to be in Matthew, as you saw, but the, uh, the format of the sermon is going to be quite a bit different. So if you're here and something like a 20-minute sermon is too short for your liking, does anybody even feel that way? It's like, it's like, that would be really encouraging to me if you're like, I just need more, right? If, if, that's, if that's true, or illustrations involving Legos, what you're about to see, uh, that weirds you out a little bit, just hang on, come back with us next week, right? We'll return to some normalcy. But if you're here and you wish, like at the end, maybe this is the majority of you, I wish messages were more like this <laughs> every week. Like, well, if that's the case, then uh, Shannon's taking volunteer signups for children's ministry. Right, you jump in, you can get your fill of it there. There's our plug. So we'll get started. For our first few minutes, though, I want to invite all of our kids that want to participate up front. And uh, Shannon, if you've got some volunteers to help, we're going to split them into three groups, and we're going to have a little opening activity, a little bit of a challenge to start our time. All right, so we're going to have one group set up over here. Igor, are you going to be in charge of this group? One group right in front and then one group over here. So just enough space right there on the floor level. All right, we're going to need some shifted in this direction. We're going to make some impromptu groups. All right, Josiah, can you go over there in your mom's group? She's longing for volunteers. All right, so here's the challenge. I'm going to give your group leader. And so we have the group over here it will be the Sharks. All right, Jonah. Once you and Lola come to this middle group right here. All right, the group in the middle, we have the dolphins. And then on the end, we have the jellyfish. All right. So here's your challenge. 
is you're going to have until we're going to start some music and until the music stops to build a tower with those Legos that is at least one foot tall. Okay? You guys think that you can handle that? All right. All right, so when we get started, you got to work together as a team. Don't just grab the Legos. You're going to build a tower as tall as you can get it. All right. Ready and go. Check it. Let's see. Oh, perfect. All right, let's see you guys. Oh, sorry. Perfect. Let's ride out a foot. Good job. All right. Oh, we got it. Oh, perfect. You guys are already out of foot. All right, we'll kill the music. All right, I want you guys to hold up your tower for everybody to see. Start with the jellyfish. All right, give them a round of applause. They did a great job. All right, how about the dolphins? Hold yours up. Perfect. All right, and the sharks. Great. All right, you guys, give your Legos back to your group leader. They can put them in the Ziploc bag. You are done with those Legos. All right, we have one more challenge. It's a quick one. Same rules. I'm going to bring you some Legos, and you have to build a tower that's one foot tall. Okay? You guys got it? How tall? One foot tall. All right. All right, let's start with this group. All right, do we have someone that wants to take their Legos? All right, Ben. There you go. All right. Here we go, this group. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and start that music. There you guys go. All right, get started. All right, stop the music. I think you guys are done. All right. All right, unfortunately, no one succeeded in this challenge. It's very disappointing. All right, you guys, you did a great job. Everybody give them a round of applause. You guys go back to your seats. Good work. Thank you, volunteers. All right. All right, so as our kids are returning to their seats, let me ask a quick question. Kids, this is for you. Was that first challenge easy? Yeah. How about the second challenge? Yeah. No. Was that second challenge even possible? Yeah. No, it was impossible. It was cruel of me to give you that challenge, right? Because, <laughs> yes. It's cruel because we can only, we have limitations, right? We can only work with what we're given, with the materials that already exist. It's part of being human. And so when you only have two Legos, you're probably not going to be able to build a tower in the heavens, right? But is God limited in the same way that we are? No, he's not. He's not limited at all. In Genesis 1.1, the first verse of the Bible, we read these words. In the beginning, God created the heavens, and the earth. That is a phenomenal statement, is it not? Like everything that exists came into existence by our creator, God. Do you think that anyone gave God a bag of Legos to start? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not even a bag of stars and planets or trees and rocks or anything like that, right? No one was supplying him with the materials. God creates it all because he alone is the creator and more than that, we see he's not just the creator, he's also the provider. Because he creates a world in which we have everything we need to live and grow, to do exactly what God's called us to do. And so God is faithful. We've learned that all, all week in VBS. He's faithful. He's our creator and our provider. And that gets us to our story about Jesus today that we heard read to us already from Julian. This is maybe the most famous 
uh, miracle in Jesus' ministry. If people think about the miracles of Jesus, this one's going to come up. And in it, Jesus shows us that he, he is the creator and he is the provider, that he is God with us. And so that's going to be our our idea we're going to chase after this morning, is that Jesus is our faithful creator and our provider. And so let's look at that this together. But before we do, I almost forgot to ask a question. Again, this is for kids, adults, don't answer it. How many of you are hungry right now? Wow. Okay. How many of you, does anyone want a snack? Okay. Final question. Do any of you like goldfish? Yeah? Raise your hand if you'd like some. Okay. That's a lot of you. And I, all right, I only brought two. Right. Did this not happen to you guys, Craft, when you made it? They didn't turn into real goldfish this week? All right. So who wanted to eat some goldfish again? Okay. We're not going to do that. All right. These are my goldfish, Luke and Leia. All right. We're not going to eat them. I do have, all right, listen, though, I have bags of goldfish for all of our listeners, all of our kids to get at the end of the service, okay? So you come see me up front. I have a bag of cracker goldfish for you. We're not going to eat Luke and Leia. So I have up here, I have a few pieces of bread, five pieces of bread, and I have my two little fish, Luke and Leia, how many of you think that this would be enough to feed lunch to everybody in this room? You think so? You think everybody in here could have enough to eat that they would be full? Would it, would it even be enough to fill up the kids in this room? It wasn't. All right, you guys, we should have rehearsed our answers before. Yeah, it would not feed you all. You would still say, I'm hungry. But in this story, in Matthew 14... Way more people were following Jesus than just the people in this room. Matthew tells us that huge crowds were following Jesus, and around uh, 5,000 men were there. That says not including women and children, so when you count them, we're talking 10, 15, maybe even 20,000 people are following Jesus, and they were really, really hungry. It was already later in the day, we read, so they had missed their snack time, their stomachs are rumbling, And Jesus' disciples are hungry too, so they come up with a plan to get some food. So, verse 15, here's what's happening. It says, Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, or an, an empty place. It's a place in the middle of nowhere. And the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. All right, so they're not just hungry. They don't have any restaurants nearby. There's no stores for them to get food. No Wendy's, no Chick-fil-A, no pizza places, right? A horrifying scenario. And so they need to find some dinner. But listen to what Jesus tells his disciples in verse 16. Imagine how you would think about this if you were a disciple. But Jesus said, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. So how do you think the disciples felt when they heard that? probably a bit like you felt when I gave you two Legos, (laughs) right? They start counting their food, and they said to him, we only have five loaves here and two fish. John tells us in his book that it was just a little boy's lunch that he brought to them. Can you imagine trying to feed 15,000 people with one lunchbox? That's crazy. And so this seems impossible. The disciples, again, they, they, they feel like they're... This is not a, uh, something that they can do. They can't feed everybody. But for Jesus, it's not too difficult. It's actually, it's too easy for Jesus. So listen to what Jesus did. This is really important. Verse 18, and he said, bring them here to me. Bring the food to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said, a blessing. So Jesus prays to his father who is in heaven. And then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. So if you guys are still listening, help me out again. How many pieces of food did Jesus begin with in in the start of the story? 
seven. So we have five pieces of bread and two small fish, okay? But now, after everybody's eaten, after these thousands of people have eaten, how many baskets are left over? Twelve. Anybody want to do the, how the, the math on that? <laughs> that doesn't make much sense, does it? How would they have 12 baskets left over when they began with so little? But as Jesus starts feeding the people, he just starts pulling out food, and he pulls out more and more and more and more. It goes around to everybody. They eat until their bellies are full. They probably don't even want dessert. You ever been so full that you said, no dessert, please? No. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they didn't either, right? But Jesus provided more than enough for them. And it's saying something really, really important about Jesus. And so what should we learn? What does Jesus want us to know from this and to do with this story? And here's, uh, again, our big idea, just in a different form, that Jesus is faithful to give eternal life to those who trust and follow him. All right, let me show you how we get there. So in John chapter 6, The day after Jesus is performing this miracle, he tells the crowd something really important about what had happened when he fed the 5,000. He tells them that their greatest need is not just to find food for their bellies, it's not to find bread or fish or Chick-fil-A sandwiches or whatever they'd be looking for. No, what they need is more than physical food that goes into their bodies. They need spiritual food. They need to to have food that's going to last Forever, and only Jesus can provide this. So listen to what Jesus says to them in John 6, verse 27. Jesus warns them, he says, do not labor, do not work for the food that perishes, right? The food that just fades away. Instead, labor for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. So Jesus, one of his favorite titles for himself is the Son of Man. So he's talking about himself. He's saying, I can give you this food. And this food is not just something that's going to last in your body for a little while or give you a little bit of energy. This food, he said, is going to lead to eternal life, a life of knowing and loving and belonging to God forever in his kingdom. That's what he's offering them. And so they're really interested. They want to know about this food. (laughs) This food sounds good. And so look what Jesus says in verse 35. Jesus said to them, I and the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So so understand what Jesus is saying here. That if you were to eat all of this bread and my precious goldfish today, (laughs) which I, I hope you wouldn't do that, but even if you did that and you got really full, chances are that tomorrow, maybe even later today, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna get hungry again. You could drink all the water in this tank, which would be gross and fishy, so don't do that. All right, but if you drank this much water, even if you're not thirsty in that moment afterwards, guess what's going to happen later? You're going to get thirsty again. And so Jesus is saying all of those things, food, water, we're going to need them over and over again. But when we come to him and we believe in him and trust in him and follow him, when we, when we rely on him to save us from our sins and to satisfy our hearts, Jesus is saying we will be full forever. Our souls, our spirits are never going to be hungry and thirsty again because Jesus satisfies that. We have everything that we need in him. We'll have true everlasting life with him forever. We'll have true total joy with him forever. And only Jesus can give that to us because not only is Jesus the creator and the provider of life, Even more than that, we read in Scripture that Jesus is also the Savior. He is the only one who can save us from our real problems. More than hunger or thirst, our problems of sin and death and a a broken relationship with God. And so just like we sang and learned in our VBS songs this week downstairs, you and I are sinful, which means that you and I have rebelled against God. We have not done what God has told us to do. And we do that with our thoughts, with our words, with our actions, all of those things. We sin against God. And as a result, the Bible tells us we don't deserve eternal life. Instead, that the penalty of sin is death. And so that's really bad news. But the good news for us is that God so loved us that he sent his son, Jesus, to live a perfect life for you, 
and then to die in your place on the cross to take that penalty of death that we deserve and then to rise again to come back to life forever so that when we belong to him, we have life forever in him with God. And so Jesus tells us here what we must do. We must come to him and we must trust him. You guys sang it already this morning, the song that we were singing this week, Jesus, Strong and Kind. Think about those words that we sang together. Jesus said that if I thirst, I should what? I should come to him. No one else can satisfy. I should what? I should come to him, right? That only Jesus can satisfy our hearts. Only Jesus can quench this thirst. And so when we do come to him, Jesus is faithful to give us eternal life as a gift. He promises that our hearts will never be empty or hungry or thirsty again because he is good and faithful. Because he came to earth to save you and give you life. And so run to him and trust in him and follow him. And so as you think about that, that's not just a call for the kids in the room. That is an invitation to every person here that if you have not run to Jesus for life, that you would do so. He is the bread of life. He is the only one who can satisfy. Trust in him. And for our boys and girls that we've had at VBS this week, if you want to talk more about that, I would encourage you, if your parents are here, to talk to them about that later today, to talk about what it means to trust in Jesus to have eternal life. For those who don't, I know Ms. Shannon, any of your VBS volunteers, I'd be happy to chat with you about what that looks like to trust in Jesus, to follow him, to have life in him, right? Well, we're about to sing again in response to what God has done for us. Let me pray for us as we get ready to do that. Father, we're so thankful that we can sing these words and know this truth that we who are thirsty and in our souls, who are hungry, who long for something to give us life, and we look around this world And there's just nothing that satisfies us forever. It's just like candy. It just lasts for a little while, and then it's gone. And we thank you that we have this good news, that your son Jesus is the bread of life, the one that when we belong to him, when we come to him, Father, you promise that you will give us life and joy that that are not just for this world, but they last forever. And so I pray for every boy and girl, for every person here today that this would be their story that they have turned from their sin they have left behind their sin and their rebellion to come trust in jesus and to have life in him father pray that you would help our eyes to be open to that and for our our ears to hear that well that you would give us receptive hearts so that we can respond to jesus rightly worship him belong to him and And just what a glorious reality we have as citizens of his kingdom as we await his return. And so be honored again in our midst now, Father. We ask this all in Christ's name.